Shabbat Shalom. Welcome to Your Arms to Israel International Ministries and our studio. It's wonderful to have you with us this week, ready to join us in the Nazarene Yisraelite truth of the Latter-day Gathering and Restoration of both houses of Yisrael. There really is no other message in Scripture. It is a message of Yahshua gathering the nations, turning them from the ways of their pagan ancestors, leaving their Western Gentile mindset behind, because it is written in Yirmiyahu chapter 16, that in the latter days, all men will come from the ends of the earth, saying, truly we have inherited only lies, only vanity, and only falsehood. And in the latter days, men will acknowledge their pagan foundation, and will say, in that day, Jeremiah 16, Yirmiyahu, says that they shall know, the nations, they shall know that I am Yahweh, Elohim. And so that's what we're all about, this Your Arms to Israel International Ministries Shabbat Video Club. We're honored to have you with us. We're honored that you've taken the time to be with us. And please feel free to share these wonderful messages that are anointed and pinpointedly accurately guided by the Ruach HaKodesh. And as you stay with us through the months and through the weeks, you will see your most Kadosh Emunaf, faith, being built up in the truth of the commonwealth, that's right, the commonwealth of Israel. Yahweh wants you and I to be equal heirs, equal partakers, equal citizens, drinking of that same commonwealth because Yeshua is king of Yisrael and certainly not of a separate non-Yisraelite entity. And so sit back and again, make yourselves at home and be comfortable with us and we'll go right now, immediately, into today's special Shabbat service. Shabbat Shalom.
Maybe Angela can take your place. Tehillah. Okay. Romeo 13 and 1. How many have come to hear the word of Yahweh today? Amen. I think we've just seen the works of Yahweh, but now let's focus in on the word of Yahweh. Amen. Let every Israelite be subject to civil governing powers. For there is no power but from Yahweh. And the civil powers that are exist are ordained of Yahweh. Whoever therefore resists civil power, resists the ordained institution of Yahweh. They that resist shall receive mishpat on themselves. For civil shoftim are not a menace to tov mitzvot, but to cause men to fear doing evil. Will you then not be afraid of the authority? Do that which is tov, and you shall have tehillah from the same authority. For he is the Eved of Yahweh to you for Tov. Plug in now, okay? Plug in. Thank you. But if you do that which is evil, then be afraid, for he bears not the sword in vain. For he is the Eved of Yahweh, an instrument to execute wrath upon one that does evil. Therefore, we must also be subject, not only for fear of wrath, but also because of our conscience. For this cause, pay taxes also, for they are Yahweh's instruments, attending continually upon this very thing. Render, therefore, to all their dues, tax to whom taxes due, custom to whom custom is due, reverence to whom reverence is due, and honor to whom honor is due. And again, this message, preaching for less than an hour, because of our testimonies and the wonderful works, that Yahweh's have done in our lives. Sometimes it's good to be short, to allow the Ruach to share what he needs to share. Amen. But this message I'll be preaching for a few hours, less than one hour, that's possible, rendering political honor. Rendering political honor. We just lost our president, Ronald Reagan. He was a wonderful, wonderful man who knew Yahweh, who loved his Savior. The things that he did, history has recorded and will record as remarkable events. During his administration, the evil empire crumbled. Hundreds of millions, <coughs> hundreds of millions of citizens behind the Iron Curtain, now are free, free. Drug use in America was cut in half. 
our, our national sense of, of feeling good about ourselves came back. He was the great liberator, a wonderful man, a giant of the 20th century. Regardless of our politics, we want to honor President Ronald Reagan for serving, being Yahweh's servant, to bring healing to a nation. A nation that was torn by Watergate, by Vietnam, by all those things that have that tugged at the, at the, in the eternal soul of our people. So we don't worship man, but we just read in the Bible, in the word of Yahweh, that we are to give honor to whom honor is due. I want to talk about a subject that a lot of you are, are uncomfortable with. So get ready to be challenged. Ronald Reagan was a great man. Amen. He didn't ask the Soviet Union to please take down the Berlin Wall and bring down communism. He demanded it. Because he knew the word of Yahweh defined certain things as evil, ra, or as good, as tov. He lived in the tov. He walked in the tov after he was shot in March of 1981. Before he was taken to surgery, he started to pray for his surgery with his wife. But then he stopped and he said, no, I, I can't pray for myself for this surgery to be successful until I pray for the confused young man who shot me. Because he was a confused, deranged young man, a wayward sheep who was lost in his waywardness. And first, Ronald Reagan prayed for John Hinckley and then pray for himself. He said, Yahweh won't hear me until I first pray for my assassin. That's the kind of man that mm -hmm. Ronald Reagan was. But this is not going to be an hour and a half or an hour in our case today of political campaigning or rally, regardless of what your politics are or not, regardless if you believe in a New World Order, Freemasonry, or any other masonry. That's not the issue here. The issue is something that many of us are uncomfortable with because we're ignorant. Turn to your neighbor and say, Yahweh doesn't want you to be ignorant. That was so weak, I feel like quitting. Let's try that again. Yahweh doesn't want you to be ignorant. The ignorance comes in when it's time to not necessarily to be involved politically, but to recognize greatness when it walks among us. Hundreds of millions of people today live free because of President Ronald Reagan. He championed light over darkness, tov over ra, and he constantly referred to scripture on a regular basis, speaking of America as the city on a hill, the city shining on a hill, right out of the Besorah of Matit Yahu, Matthew. So he was a great, a giant. When the 20th century is recalled and remembered, you'll remember two names, maybe three, when it comes to politics. FDR, Harry Truman, and Ronald Reagan, when it comes to greatness. Greatness is a, is a, uh, in a leader is someone who can lead by example, and people will change because he walked his conviction. The believing community can learn many lessons from the marriage and the life and the faithfulness of Ronald and Nancy Reagan. They were faithful to each other in covenant, in love, honoring the covenant of marriage, not philandering, not cheating on each other. A true American love story. So this message again preaching for less than an hour today because of the wonderful works of Yahweh among us. Rendering political honor. See, we think, and we've been so conditioned, that if you render any honor to any politician, you are being political, you're involved in the New World Order, and you are um, promoting the agenda of Freemasonry, okay? 
or whatever other thing. We don't want to be political. Being spiritual means being apolitical. See, that's the way we've been trained. That's the way we've been taught. It's absolutely incorrect. We read today in Romeo 13, 1, 7, Render therefore to all their due. Tax to whom tax, custom to whom custom, reverence is due, honor to whom honor is due. I want to talk about rendering political honor. The word of Yahweh has a lot to say about us as believers rendering political honor. Did you know that? There's a lot to say. Regardless of our politics. Regardless if we're Republican or Democrat. Or Ralph Naderites. Or Independent. Or Green Partyites. Okay, regardless of what we believe politically. We are, when we are commanded when things are obvious, things are clear, that this man was worthy of great honor. He was worthy of tremendous honor from his wife, from his family, from his country. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. And we are to, com we are to commend righteousness in civil and political affairs, listen, among civil and political rulers, so that the spiritual matters amongst us can flow freely. Ronald Reagan was the great liberator, not just the great communicator. And through his life, hundreds of millions of people can worship Yahweh, can talk about Yahweh, can sing the praises of Yahweh, can read their Bibles not in a hole underground, but in public, giving him honor and respect and praise so that in a free society, Yahweh can receive the praise. And these, our brothers and sisters, should come out from underground. Ronald Reagan deserved that honor because he allowed, as far as we're concerned, spiritual matters to flourish freely. How I many know what I'm talking about? to flourish freely. Instead of having sex in the, on the, in the side of the Oval Office, disgracing himself and disgracing the presidency and bringing dishonor to every, every, every criteria that the Bible upholds for a leader to be holy and blameless in character and in, in, in his essence, he walked out covenant faithfulness. Faithfulness to his wife, faithfulness to the American people, faithfulness, his yea was yea, his nay was nay, of course he wasn't perfect. None of us are perfect. There's no such thing as perfect leadership. But very few men's lives can transform the world. And this man was used by Yahweh. Not him alone. He was used by Yahweh to transform the world. The great liberator. Regardless of your politics. And we as believers need to learn not to just criticize politicians because they're so easy targets. They're very easy targets, especially when things go wrong. Because we look for perfection in our leadership, and none of us are perfect. Reagan had his Iran Contra, and he had his mistakes of judgment. Welcome, welcome to humanity. It's a good thing you're not president, because everybody would, because your humanity would be on display for six billion people. So it's easy to criticize a policy shortcoming, but the overall life of Ronald Reagan established him as a giant of the 20th century. What Truman didn't do, what Eisenhower didn't do, all the well he could have, the Soviet Union would have fell anyway. He rejected mutually assured destruction, meaning you destroy us, we'll destroy you, so no one will push the button and we'll live in a checkmate situation. He goes, no. I'm not going to live in a checkmate situation. I live by the Bible. I live by the word of Yahweh. We're, we're, tough, we're light, you're darkness, and according to my scriptures, you're, not, you're going to be on the ash bin of history. Like him, don't like him, regardless. You and I as believers, regardless of our politics, need to learn to develop an admiration and an honor in our lives and our hearts and our attitudes toward those who are public servants because the word of Yahweh we just read. Did you, was I the only one that just read that? 
We think we can get away by just reading the Torah. We can just, we can just, you know, walk around the Torah, sing Eitz Chaim He, do our worship, do our praise, make believe that there is no connection between the spiritual and the physical, and pretend that politics do not affect us, they're not important, they are outside of the realm of our lives. But the Bible doesn't teach that. The Word of Yahweh does not teach that. The Word of Yahweh teaches a lot of things about political leadership in and amongst and how it affects not only people, nations, and communities, but also the people of Yahweh. In heaven's view, the righteous, or the tzaddikim, and the righteousness of the leader of a nation is equally, listen, vital and crucial as is the righteousness of the rabbis and the Nevi'im. Let me blow this you. Let me let me blow this your way. In Scripture, biblical revival, the salvation of souls, the born again, the regeneration of souls, the harvesting of souls, the regathering of Israel, the revival of Torah, the revival of a, of a love for Yahweh, the revival of a, of, of, a, of a hunger and a desire and a thirst for the things of Yahweh does not come through spiritual leaders. So you can, you, can, you can sit there all righteous and holy and say, oh darn, I was hoping that we wouldn't hear a political message about President Ronald Reagan. I was hoping we'd go to Deuteronomy or Numbers today. Because that just shows you how we've been trained. That just shows you how we've been programmed. According to scripture, and I'll show you in a few minutes, Every spiritual revival comes through just, righteous, set-apart, holy, political leadership submitted to Yahweh. Amen. Never through the priests, never through the Kohanim, never through Moshe, never through the Nevi'im. Those who are called in the spirit world are vessels for Yahweh. They are conduits for Yahweh. But they do not revive nations because nations already think that they are religious fanatics, that they are religious fruitcakes, that they are religious zealots, and they're just busy being religious because religious people are busy being religious. Well, you know Rabbi Moshe from morning to night. You know, you know uh, the Shoshana there. You know, you know Edna from morning to night. It's Yeshua this, Yeshua that. You can't talk about everything. They're so heavenly minded. They're no earthly. Good. And the world sees us as believers that we are so heavenly what? Minded that we're no earthly good. We can't affect positive change. We can't tell evil it's evil because if we tell the, if we tell a government that it's evil, they think we're being political. And after all, you know we're not supposed to be political. We are supposed to be spiritual. So in scripture, the prophets, the Nevi'im, the Kohanim, the priests, that were tzaddik, that were set apart, that were righteous, isn't that what you expect? What do you expect from sinners? Sin. What do you expect from righteous people? Set apart people. To conduct righteousness. But how many Billy Grahams does it take? Not, and I'm not making a judgment on Billy Graham. How many Billy Grahams does it take to revive America? Let's try 30, 39 billion. Billy Graham's doing his thing, and most of America still going to hell in a handbasket, and he's been doing his thing for 50 years. Christian television now reaches every home around the globe. It is on every satellite dish around the globe, including all land with and without Confederate flags. You see any world revival? So you could be the most anointed preacher, pastor, rabbi, or leader. You cannot 